Welcome, foolish mortals, to Castle Pepdeckel, located deep in the heart of Transylvagus. What terrors lie within? What horrifying sights await you? Don't worry, you'll find out. I swear that is a lot in time to order the radish burritos. Greetings, Yorley. I wasn't expecting you for another... 45 seconds. Well, we might as well get this turret on the road. My name is Vincent Grimley. You may remember me from my days as a beloved news anchor. The town of Vinh Linh, just inside the border of North Vietnam, was struck today by U.S. and South Vietnamese planes. Or from my series of commercials back in the 80s. So remember, always ask for the cool, refreshing taste of Dolt 45 malt liquor. Yeah, baby. I was just thinking about you. Or from the time I lit up Broadway. The music of the... Well, I'm back on the air to bring you classic horror films, the first of which is 1958's The Screaming Skull. It was shot over a period of six weeks at the Huntington Hartford Estate. It stars no one and features nothing and will make your eyes bleed. Isn't that right, Fido? Yes. Enjoy. You know, when there's no one else around, you can't shut the fuck up. The Screaming Skull is a motion picture that reaches its climax in shocking horror. Its impact is so terrifying that it may have an unforeseen effect. It may kill you. Therefore, its producers feel they must assure free burial services to anyone who dies of fright while seeing The Screaming Skull. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Welcome, Mrs. Whitlock. Lovely, Eric. You look disappointed for a moment. It is not. It's really lovely. Oh, look! That's the den there. That's right. Is that a bedroom? Yes, it is. Gonna be ours? You'll need some fixing first. It was her room, was it? Yes. Come on along, I'll show you the rest of the house. Bidding now, I suppose. Empty like this. But it was usually this way. Shortly after Marion and I were married, she removed all the furniture her parents had left her. This is our home, she used to say. And we must choose everything carefully. Well, we didn't get very far before she died. But now that you're here, it's going to be lovely again. I'll get the things out of storage tomorrow. We're all town at the warehouse. And I'll take care of that, too. You have candles? Sure. It'll be twice as romantic. Speaking of being romantic... Ow! I got to carry you over the threshold. I love you. I love you. Life had died out for me. What's that up there? Oh, that's where Mickey keeps his gardening things. Who's Mickey? The gardener. He's kept it up the two years I've been away. By himself? That's right. He must work awfully hard. Oh, he and Marion would spend hours on end working here in the gardens. And up in the greenhouse back there. See, he loved her very much. Sometimes I used to wonder who she was. My wife or Mickey's nursemaid. You know, I don't think he quite believes she's gone. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings and scold her for neglecting the gardens. You still love her, don't you? No, I'm not jealous. I'm grateful to him. I think to have loved once, really loved, to learn how to love always. Learning it from her, you give again to me. I wish there was some way to thank her. Who's that? I don't know. They're driving around the back. Come on, come along. Eric! I see Eric. <laughs> Please stop by to meet your new wife. <laughs> oh, Eric, this is a wonderful surprise. It's been a long time. It has. Reverend? Good to see you, Eric. Jenny, this is Mrs. Snow. I'm very happy to meet you. Jenny, this is a lovely surprise. And the Reverend Mr. Snow. Hello, my dear. Oh, she's sweet, Eric. I know. I happened to be going into town, I ran into Mr. Maurer. He told me you were getting back today. And we thought we'd just drop by and bring you something for your dinner. Oh, nice. And it'll save you all the bother of shopping while you're trying to get settled. Then why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, no, not tonight. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't think of that. Oh, no, please say yes. I'd like for you to. It would be like old times. All right, on the condition that I do the cooking. You don't have to. You know, I know that, but I'd love to. Well, there's Mickey. Excuse me, honey. Mickey! Oh, poor Mickey. He keeps this place up like a shrine. Oh, hey, I have a shrine, too.
Jerry told me how he loved Marion. Mickey's father was a gardener here when Marion's mother was alive. Mickey and Marion grew up together here. Jenny, this is Mickey. How do you do, Mickey? I hope we'll be good friends. Well, Mickey. Thank you, Mickey. Well, shall we all go inside? That's a good idea. Mickey, remember you promised me some of those rose cuttings. I sing you again, Mickey. I'm going to have to get you down to the barber shop one day very soon. Excuse us, Mickey. Isn't she wonderful? Yes, she's not at all like Marion, and I think that's for the best. You know, so many men, when they lose a wife, they try so hard to deny the loss they marry someone exactly like the first wife. It hardly seems fair using the living to bring back the dead, does it? No, I suppose it doesn't. We make a prison for ourselves out of the past, at least our sentimental wished-for pasts. Mrs. Snow. Yes, dear. There's something I must tell you and the Reverend. Well, of course, Eric. What is it? You see, Jenny has not had a very happy past. Oh? And talking about it or about something that might strongly remind her of it, she's very impressionable. Is there something wrong, Eric? No, not really. You see, she lost her parents many years ago in a very tragic way. And talking about unhappy pasts only... She's very impressionable. See, I want her to be happy, Mrs. Snow. Of course you do, and so do we all. Now, how did she lose them? Well, look, I'm not prying, dear. It's just that Mr. Snow and I can help better if we know something about it. They drowned in an accident. Jenny saw it all. Who's Mr. Maurer? Mr. Maurer? Why, he's a lawyer in town. I thought no one knew we were coming. You said you heard from Mr. Maurer? Well, Eric wrote him. He takes care of the estate or what's left of it. Oh, that's right. Eric has to see him tomorrow. Well, Eric's co-executor of the estate, along with Mr. Maurer. You see, Marion's death was so sudden that, well, all that was left to Eric was the house and these grounds. Mr. Maurer told me that Eric had found someone very sweet and very kind, and with whom he was very much in love. He didn't say enough. How did Marion die? Didn't Eric tell you? I think the subject's rather painful to him. I'd like to make him talk about it. Would you mind telling me? I'd like to know. It was a rainy day. She and Mickey had been working up there in the greenhouse. She left him to go back to the house for a few minutes. The way we pieced it together after the accident is that while she was coming down this path, apparently it began to rain very hard. She must have run along here. 
We don't know, of course, what happened then. Perhaps she slipped on a leaf. The base of her skull was smashed. It was thought that she hit her head on the edge of the cement wall where we're sitting. And she fell in there. She died in the water. That's where Eric found her ten minutes later. Jenny into our lives. Thank you for the dinner. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Edward, did you know that Jenny's very wealthy? Oh, yes. Mr. Ma told me in town today. Well, she's not at all like Mary. You know, she's so gentle and timid as if... as if she were afraid of something. I knew you'd like my friends, dear. Hey, what's this? Huh? Just happy, that's all. Oh, come. So happy. Come on. in the jungle. It's all about a man who waited all of his life for something great and wonderful to happen to him. He had only one good friend. It's a woman whom he confided. And she died. <laughs> her grave suddenly realized that she was the great and wonderful thing that he'd waited for all of his life. But it's too late then. And his memories, like a beast in the jungle, rise up out of the past, overwhelm him. Oh, poor fellow. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what he missed. Mm -hmm.
I don't think Mickey looks for her in the pond. Jenny, now stop it. I can't help it, Harry. That bad feeling's come back. I've forbidden you to talk about it. She looked like that, Eric. My mother looked like that. Jenny, Jenny. I can't help it, Eric. Darling, you're just talking yourself into those same old fears. I've got to talk about it, Eric. I have to talk about it. I forbid it. you to talk about it now. What? Just that with you beside me, I'm alive again. I don't want to be sick anymore. Honey, look. Now, you mustn't go on thinking like this. Besides, how could a very poorly done self-portrait upset you so much? I know it's only my own fear. It's my own guilt that I can't get away from. Eric, I'm sorry. Oh, I want you to listen to me. And I want you to believe me. Now, you were sick once, yes, but you were cured. Mickey caused this. You may as well know. He does look for Marion night after night down by that pond. And he probably comes here afterwards. I'm going to speak to Mickey in the morning. Now, don't you see? Now, simply, it's all explained away. But if I also heard a scream, Eric, before when I went to the hospital, I was hearing things. I'm hearing them again. What did you hear? It was a high, strange scream. High, strange scream. Like a peacock's cry? What's that sound like? Come here. Sound like that? See? It's all very, very real. Such a fool. You feeling better now? Yes. Let's talk about Peggy Weber, who played Jenny in tonight's movie. She had an acting career that spanned over 60 years, and she's currently the founder and director of the California Artist Radio Theater. And she looked pretty good running around in an empty house wearing a giant mosquito net. Peggy apparently was not a huge fan of the film, because when she saw it, she said she was not impressed, and that it, quote, made her want to throw up. Hey, Fido, what do you think of that sweet Mercedes Goldwing? He, he loved it. We'll be back. Uh, we won't be bothered with any of Mickey's nightly visits anymore. I've forbidden him to come into the house. Well, I was just nervous last night. I wish you wouldn't take it out on Mickey. No, he's a child. He must be disciplined. I'd like him to feel I'm his friend. Why don't you do some gardening with him while I'm in town? If he sees you're interested, you win him over quickly enough. Wait a minute. He lists staples mostly. Are you sure you don't want to come in with me? You get more done without me. You've got to see about the lights, the phone, the bank. And the warehouse people about that furniture, you know, that cop's just about broken my back. Yeah, don't forget to see Mr. Maurer. I have to see him this evening. It's a bore, but I'll have to see him. Will you be home in time for dinner? I'll wait for you. No, if I'm not, don't you worry, darling. Getting out of Maurer's clutches sometimes requires an act of God. I love you.
Hürmeti. Hop, ne kadar? Ne kadar karim? The handsome one, isn't he? So cuddly and warm. When I was a little girl, I used to want to be a caterpillar. So I was a very little girl. There you go. Marion must have loved her gardens. We'll keep them lovely for her always. You know what I'd like to do, Mickey? I'd like to pick some of the nicest flowers and take them to her. Would you like that? Yes. Eric told me she was near here. Would you show me where? It was a great loss to all of you, Mickey. She cries. She cries? In the night. Oh, don't cry, Mickey. I heard her. Heard her? I don't think he quite expects she's gone. She cries. She cries in the night. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings. She died in the water. The base of her skull was smashed. She didn't want to die. She died in the water.
love for Marion wishes to cry to be from her. I out of my sickness. Now, darling, we've been all through that nonsense last night. Don't you see? I've never imagined seeing these things before. To just stand there and see it. Have it turn out to be nothing. I want you to call Dr. Rand tomorrow in New York. I want you to take me back. No, Jenny. Now, it may sound selfish, but don't you see, having you to love, I'm happy too. I don't want to lose that. Now, in the morning, Mr. Snow will be here and we'll tell him. He's very comforting. And I think he'll agree with me. About what? I think it's Mickey. You see, he hated me from the first. Marion was his friend, and when I married her, he thought I was taking her away from him. And now that she's dead, taken away from him forever, I suppose in a childish mind of his, I'm responsible for that. And 
And now, because you're my wife, and in Marion's house, he hates you, too. I don't think Mickey's responsible. He's not quick enough or clever enough. And who? Myself. It's all in my own mind. We do need somebody else, darling. We need somebody outside of the confusions of our love for each other. Uh, the Reverend Snow will be here in the morning. You never know what you may find lurking deep within the dungeons below Castle Papdeco. Ooh, look, a penny. Mm. We'll be back with more Night Chills Theater. <laughs> Say you threw the skull down here where Eric is looking? Yes. Did you find anything, Eric? Nothing yet. Surely, Jenny, you must agree with me that anything as fragile as a skull would have been smashed to bits down there. And Eric has found nothing. And to assume that the skull would move of its own all the way from there to the driveway door. Oh, now, Jenny, there's no reason for that. Don't you see, I agree with you. Did Eric tell you I spent over a year in the sanitarium? Oh, well, Eric told Mrs. Snow that you were very impressionable, but that's all. I know lots of people needing a rest go to sanitariums. This wasn't quite that kind of sanitarium. You see, I grew up loving my father and hating my mother. Well, she never knew it. Something I kept to myself. She was very beautiful. Very gay. Like her. Very much. And I knew she resented that I was not more like her. I used to lie awake at night and wish she were dead. Well, that isn't very unusual. I understand many children go through such a period. I was no longer a child. And one day, I got my wish. They were both drowned. I could still hear her scream. I was all alone on the little beach. And all I could see was the overturned boat on the top of the waves. And I kept trying to reach them. And the waves kept throwing me back. And then I could hear her cries no more. And then hours later, the men came and searched for the bodies. They were never found. That's when this bad feeling started, this feeling that if I'd really wanted to, I could have saved them, but I didn't. That I really killed them. No, Jenny. You tried. You tried your very best. I did. But thinking and begging and praying couldn't make this feeling go away. That's when they took me to the hospital. They told me I was cured. Jenny. They told me I was cured. Mickey? You go on. I'll be there in time for lunch. Well, where do you think he's gone off to, Eric? Who knows about Mickey? He might be hiding. Have you looked at Marion's grave?
Ricky. 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 Did you find him? No. Where's Jenny? She's with Mrs. Snow on the patio. Eric. Ricky? I think I should tell you that Jenny has confided in me about the sanitarium. Oh. Does your wife know? I told her Jenny was impressionable, but not that. I haven't said a word to her. Mr. Snow, you can do both Jenny and me a great favor by forgetting she ever told you that. But Eric... Ricky helps explain. It explains nothing. If I were you, Eric... I take it away. If she's so impressionable and that house frightens her so much, why subject her to it? Look, I can't do a thing like that. It'd be the worst thing for her. Mr. Snow, it would be admitting she was sick again. I want her to be happy. We'll stay here. Perhaps you know best, Eric. See, I've got a simple and old-fashioned piece of philosophy. The only cure for her fear is to teach her she's loved. I mean, really loved. And I love her so much. God bless you for that, Eric. She's a very fortunate woman having someone like you to care for her. Good night, Sue. Oh, Jenny, Jenny. Sorry. Darling, you've got to believe it will not happen again. Ever. Mickey! Mickey! Eric! Doing that skull. Stop it, it wasn't his fault. Where did you get it? Leave him alone. I'll take care of this, Jenny. Now, I know you don't like me, Mickey. I know you're doing anything to get us to leave here. This idiotic attempt to scare us as if we were children. It was you, wasn't it? Wasn't it? No, not me, not me. Uh, get out of here, get out of here. Ah. Apologize to him. You know as well as I do, it's not his fault. It's all in my own mind. Jenny, I'm going to do something. And you're going to help me do it. What's that? That portrait upstairs. It reminds you of your mother. Yes. You were fine until you saw it. Now it has you all preoccupied with memories of the past. We're going to burn it. Precious to you, Eric. The picture means nothing to me. I want you to be happy. We can't be until this fear is out of our lives. All right, Jenny. Go on, Jenny. Yes, we can't let those 
those ashes stand overnight. And the brush in these hills is a regular tinderbox. You want to help me? Are oh, you feeling better? As if I destroyed her with my own hands. She'll come back and... She'll come back. Darling, if you go on talking that way, you destroy the whole purpose. Now, the thing is out of the house and it's over. You just give it half a chance. You'll begin to forget it. And if you'll just spread those ashes out a little for me, I'll get the water to it. That's it. There's no skull there, darling. There is no skull there, Jenny. Darling, there's no skull there. There's no skull. Catch a plane tonight? When we get into town, I will call Mr. Maurer. He'll arrange a midnight plane. I think there'd be more time. Time for so many wonderful things. It's going to be all right. Of course. It's just me. Good evening, my dear. Hello. Mrs. Snow's hens thought you might like some fresh eggs for your breakfast in the morning. Hello, Eric. This is a surprise. Those hens labored mightily, as you can see. Fine. I'll take them. You'll excuse me, dear. What is it, Eric? I've got to take Jimmy away. The hospital she was in before. It happened again? I thought it would help her if we got rid of that portrait. You know the one? Yes. Well, we burned it. She saw a skull in the ashes. You were there? I saw nothing, of course. Of course. And I thought it was Mickey. But when I was there myself and I saw... Mr. Snow, there's something I've never told you. I've never told anybody. But when Jenny was put away in that hospital, she tried to do away with herself. I'm terribly afraid. You think she might try it again? I know she will, unless I get her back to that hospital. When are you going? Tonight. We shall miss you. Mrs. Snow and I have grown very fond of Jenny. Yes, and she of you. I don't suppose you'll be coming back here again, Eric? No. Never. I'll miss him and his wife. He's very kind. Yes. When I said goodbye to him just now, he tried to talk me out of what I saw. How? Oh. 
He said he thought the skull was real. He's going to bring some men in the morning to search the estate. Where? Everywhere. He's just talking, trying to be kind. I suppose. I'll go upstairs and pack. You want to come with me? I'll be up in a minute. You must have. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I don't Where is it? I don't know. Tell me the truth. You took it. The Screaming Skull was shot at a time when an on-screen couple had to sleep in separate movies. Now, in honor of The Screaming Skull, I'm going to show you how to make a Flaming Skull cocktail. I looked all over online for a Screaming Skull cocktail. I couldn't find one. So I found a few recipes for a Flaming Skull. And I'm going to show you one right now. i got to warn you, I don't do well with gin. It doesn't react well to me, and uh, this video might get very ugly very quick. So, first we add one ounce of the aforementioned gin. Oh, God. Whoops. Then we add one ounce of vermouth. That's the stuff right here in the bottle that I'm pouring. Then you add one ounce of vodka. Then you add a half ounce of lime, which is way too much if you ask me. Okay, then you add one quarter ounce of grenadine. It's a little more than a quarter ounce. Then you shake it all up. That's enough. Now you're supposed to add uh, dry ice to it, but I ain't got none. So I'm just going to use regular ice. Okay. Smell that gin. Okay. Oh, it's dog shit. <laughs> oh. 
so that's how you enjoy a flaming skull cocktail minus the dry ice make your own enjoy back to the movie that he didn't see it when Jenny saw it. I know. Oh, but why should Eric lie like that? Mickey, those other times with the skull, did you do it? No. Mickey, you've never lied to me before. Lying is a sin. You understand that? You must not lie to me now. Did you do it, Mickey, all those other times? No. I simply do not understand that. It wasn't Mickey. And it wasn't her imagination. But why would Eric do such a thing? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, what do you think we should do about it? We're going back there, to that house. Leaving, Mickey. I'd like to say goodbye. I'd like to leave as your friend, Mickey. Mickey.
Jenny, are you all right? Oh, Jenny. Eric. Eric, try. Shh. Oh, Where I is Eric? Don't, don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'll find him. It's all right, Edward. Now be careful. Shh. It's all right, darling. Oh, it's all right. <coughs> oh, it's all right. Don't cry. Come on. Oh, no. <coughs> Eric! Eric! Please answer me! Eric! Eric! Eric, where are you? Did he do it? Your money. The question is now, did Marion die in an accident? I suppose we'll never know. back to the Screaming Skull on Night Chills Theater. Well, Peggy Weber during filming discovered that she was pregnant with her son, which caused them to have to rewrite a few of the scenes that she was in, specifically one where she had to take a tumble down the stairs. They wanted their lead actress to do a stairfall stunt in a nighty on marble stairs. Nice. Well, I gotta go and nurse this hangover from the Flaming Skull. So, until next time, thank you for watching Night Chills Theater, Carpe Noctem, and good night.